or where were you when all of this started unfolding? Uh, I was in my office. I had done a uh, Zoom uh, meeting from uh, basically 11 to a little after 12. And then I went and got a salad and came back to my office, started watching the proceedings. And then within a few minutes, uh, <clears throat> there was a Capitol Police officer running through the halls, banging on doors, telling us we had to uh, uh, evacuate and go to the Longworth building, which is the next building, office building over. I'm in Cannon. And, and apparently there was a pipe bomb that was uh, found at the Capitol Hill Club, which is the Republican club and the, and the, where the RNC is located, Republican National Committee. So we evacuated to the next building for about a half hour. I came back and then within 10 minutes, I got a text that said, uh, exterior, external threat to the Capitol, uh, get, stay in your office, lock your doors and stay away from windows. And that's, that's when I knew that things were serious. There had been rumblings about this. That date had been set for a long time. What was the mood in Washington? Did people anticipate it? I mean, it, it seems like even though we're not surprised, we are surprised, I guess, you know, all of those things. Had you gotten the feeling that things were going to be tense anyway that day? I think everybody was concerned about the, um, the known groups that were coming. So we, you know, the Proud Boys had been in town for a couple of days and several of the other uh, highly publicized groups had been around town. Uh, and then, you know, you saw things like the 50 cars caravanning from Louisville. And there was a video that surfaced of a group that was flying on a plane from uh, Texas to Washington where they totally disrupted the flight. And uh, so, you know, I think everybody was a little bit apprehensive. Nobody, nobody anticipated the kind of assault that uh, ended up happening yesterday. I, and that's my question. You know, we, we've talked about the different comments that have been made and, and, you know, the precursor leading up to this, but you were still, how would you couch it? Surprised? Shocked? What, what word would you use? Shocked clearly descri describes what I saw, uh, the way I felt. Um, the more I watched it, the more uh, heartbroken I became. Uh, it was, it became much more of an emotional reaction than um, than kind of a dispassionate journalist type reaction. And I mean, I was never afraid. I, I, I never thought that they were, that I was in any jeopardy personally, because it was clear that the assault was um, intended to disrupt the counting process. And they weren't just running around looking for people to hurt. So uh, again, I thought I felt safe in my office. But um, you had to be watched, concerned for your colleagues, though, obviously, who were at the Capitol. Well, of course, absolutely. And uh, I do have, do have one very uh, dear friend, uh, probably my best friend in Congress, who is was in the in the gallery when uh, they started to break into the Capitol. And you mind uh, saying who that is? As uh, Steve Cohen, who represents Memphis, and I, I talked to him a little bit later, and he said, "Yeah, they." Um, he had to get his gas mask out because they had released some uh, uh, tear gas and uh, he was he was whisked out of there as soon as they could get him out. Uh, so he wasn't there when the guns were drawn in the Capitol, but uh, certainly he was he felt threatened. When you talked about the emotion, was that for democracy, just the realization? Tell me what it was that struck you at that moment. Well, you know, I, my interest in politics began when John Kennedy was elected president. And uh, I remember thinking at that, just that incredible speech and that the pageantry of that inauguration that I said, well, the world must look at us with great admiration. And then thinking about how the world was viewing what uh, happened yesterday. And it, it became something where I started thinking about my grandson. Now he's 17 months old and you, you start thinking about what kind of a country are we becoming and what kind of country is he going to have to deal with? And so it, it became personal in a way, but also, you know, you, you work in a place, I've now worked here for 14 years and the, the way people revere that building, uh, the reaction I see from people when 
I take them through the Capitol. And, and of course, you know, you, you become a little bit numb to it yourself because you don't pay attention. But in those moments where you see how significant it is to people, and then you wonder how people, how American citizens who claim to love America and who swinging the American flag back and forth uh, would do that to uh, basically the, the center of our government. Let's talk about the words that you used on that. I've seen domestic terrorists today. You used the word insurrection. Um, at first, you know, people weren't really calling it that. And then the language started evolving. Uh, at what point did you say, that's what this is? Uh, pretty much from the beginning. I, I, I was asked about whether I considered it terrorism. I said, no, terrorism is generally done to create fear. And this was something very different. This was an attack. This was, this was uh, essentially a revolt against the government. And so insurrection seemed to be the, the proper word. I, I know subsequently President-elect Biden is using that to describe it as well. Uh, but that was the first thing that came to mind. That and, and revolution, that's, that's what it resembled most closely to me. The things you see in other countries when people are scaling the walls of important buildings in other countries uh, to depose a government. And that's what it looked like. Let me ask you, I saw so much on social media yesterday. And one question that I saw that came up repeatedly, and I thought it was really interesting was, is this the beginning or is this the end? And I really thought that was a fascinating question. And what's your thought on that? Because the fear of so many is, this is just the beginning of more to come. I certainly don't think it's the end. Um, I think that there was, a, an awakening among some people yesterday that things had gotten beyond the point of um, acceptable dissent. And I think you, you saw that with some Republican members who all of a sudden found religion uh, yesterday during the day. And you've seen it with people like Mick Mulvaney resigning today and uh, from the administration and several others. And uh, But that's not going to change the the anger that's out there in the country, uh, just the fact that some politicians, some of whom are basically, quite frankly, trying to redeem their reputations uh, and put some distance between them and Donald Trump, that's motivating a lot of them. So I, I think in terms of getting government, either con um, get government support or implicit, uh, implicit support, an encouragement from government officials. I think that probably is uh, will be diminished, but I'm not sure that that the anger that's out in the public uh, will change much. And the brazenness of what we saw. And the today. brazenness. I mean, absolutely, yes. that there was just, I mean, you know, just pushed through kind of thing. Yeah, the total disres the total disrespect for the Capitol Police and the law enforcement. And the willingness to just go hand-to-hand -hand combat with some of them was something that I don't think anybody would have ever expected. And I think that's one reason that, you know, you, you got to cut some slack for the Capitol Police because uh, they've never encountered that kind of uh, brazen attack. Your word is I perfect. just saw that hand-to-hand -hand combat with, with some of them. Um, yeah. Some would say that was failed security. So let me pick up on that question real fast. Because I, I was sitting there thinking bigger picture, my gosh, if, if there is a worldview and people are watching, it looked pretty easy to get in what you would think would be one of the most well-kept, well-preserved, you know, well-protected places. But it seemed with such ease that people got in. Does that concern you at all? Oh my gosh, yes. I, I think we're all concerned about that and, and kind of mystified. Um, I think, you know, we, We've seen instances in which demonstrations have been at the Capitol, including most recently uh, Black Lives Matter when last this past year, and the security were out in force. A very uh, different picture. Very different picture. And here you had uh, what was predominantly a white crowd. It was probably almost an exclusively white crowd uh, with Trump supporting uh, identification and they did not take the same approach to security. I think they probably misjudged the, the intent of the crowd, uh, but I, and I think they were overwhelmed. Clearly they were overwhelmed. But 
when, um, as soon as that crowd started marching from uh, the White House ellipse to the Capitol, uh, I think a, an all points bulletin sh should have gone out and maybe it did. But uh, you know, initially the White House uh, was not willing to send the National Guard to help supplement the Capitol Police. That was a big mistake. But uh, we're going to have to do a great deal of, uh, of review and uh, an analysis of what went wrong, because clearly uh, a lot went wrong. Let me ask you about where we go from here. Um, because I look at this, we are, we're so entrenched in, in, in our beliefs and the other side. And I, I mean, even Republicans, Democrats, and that kind of thing. Have you reached out to anybody across the aisle today to talk with them, to begin those discussions of where do we go? Because clearly, clearly after yesterday, I, are, are you of the belief we cannot continue on this same path? Um, yes, clearly we, we can't, uh, but I'm not optimistic that we won't. And I mean, I, I have not reached out specifically to any Republican members, but I was just in a room where several Republicans were talking. And the only thing they seemed to be concerned about was what their political, uh, how this was gonna play politically. That's the conversation I overheard. And, yes. and you know, that's, that's disturbing in a, in a way. Um, you know, I think most of my Democratic colleagues right now are focused on how do we um, avert any uh, potential danger coming from the White House over the next 13 days that uh, you know, a lot of us, I'm, I'm doing it today, a lot of us are calling for the Vice President to invoke the 25th Amendment and to, to um, expel, uh, well, at least to, to depose the President uh, for the next 13 days and, and have Vice President Pence take over uh, because clearly the President has become a clear and present danger to the country. And uh, there's a lot he can do still in 13 days, a lot of damage he can do, a lot of chaos he can create. Let me, the numbers I was looking at too, at the end of that uh, certification last night, you know, those who certified and those who objected. I mean, it was still a considerable amount of people who objected. And, and that's where you go, then what is the way forward? If there are people still objecting to the election results, what is the way forward? I mean, it's a good question, uh, and I wish I had an answer. You know, I think about this all the time, Rachel. It's, it's, uh, and we've, we've watched it for four years, and we've watched the, um, the xenophobia, we've watched the racism, we've watched the anti Semitism, we've watched the anger grow, and we've watched, uh, we've watched all of those uh, terrible forces become more and more mainstream. Uh, people have become sh become shameless uh, about, and even cavalier, even boastful about um, taking those positions in public. And according to polling, if you look at the numbers, you've got about forty percent of the country who's comfortable that is comfortable with um, that type of uh, attitude. And it's totally un-American. It's totally undemocratic. And when you have forty percent of the population who that does not believe in uh, our system of government and the, the values that we have professed to hold as a country for 240 years, then um, uh, that, that's something that seems to be very difficult to change. Uh, I was going to ask wanna just, you just don't want to say, well, yeah, we elected the president this time, so everything's all right, because that's clearly not the case. I, you know, I, I was going to ask you, you know, where you see hope. And I guess the question is, do you see any? Um, I, I tweeted, tweeted something last night because as I was getting ready to go to bed, I thought, I'm almost afraid to go to sleep. It's like, if I don't stay up and keep watch, I'm almost afraid of what's gonna happen next. I don't know if you feel that way. Do you feel hopeful about anything? I always like to try to find a silver lining, a piece of hope somewhere, but it's getting increasingly difficult. It is. Well, you know, I'm hopeful in, in the long run, because I think uh, this, is, this is not a, a younger person's perspective that we're seeing. Uh, younger people are much more tolerant. They're much more uh, engaged, I think, and, and open to uh, facts and reality and science. Uh, and on, on the other hand, I think you know, 
over a couple of generations, there'll be very few uh, people who are not at least biracial. So you're going to have a, a society where racism is going to be difficult because everybody's going to have a, a variety of blood in, in them. Uh, but that's not going to help us get through 2021 or 2022 or probably even 2030. Uh, that's a much longer term uh, trend that, that, that I am hopeful about. But right now we've got to figure out how to be a um, a, govern, a governable society. And um, I'm not sure exactly how we do it. You know, the media, I think, has a, has a role to play. The media has been much more uh, complicit in kind of playing the, uh, the equitable game, the fairness game that, you know, the balances on, and to not, to be afraid to call people lie, liars when they're, they're lying. Uh, Trump has gotten away with so much over the last four years because a lot of the media have been afraid until relatively recently to call him what he is. And so there's been an incredible resistance to discussing uh, the president's mental health when we've had thousands of mental health experts who from beginning four years ago said, we're very much alarmed at this president. He manifests behavior, which is dangerous to uh, the American people. And nobody would listen to them or give them any, uh, give them any coverage. And uh, they've been proven right time after time after time. So we've got to, I think we've got to be uh, in the short term, much, we got to be much more demanding of our, of our media in terms of um, making sure that we don't implicitly uh, endorse these terrible trends that, uh, that we're seeing in, in society. So many lessons, like you said, that need to be learned just from, from looking back at very recent history. And my final question to you, with the inauguration coming up, I mean, will there be a transfer of power? What are, what are you thinking as we look toward inauguration day like no other, obviously? Uh, yes, there will be an inauguration of uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris on the, on the 20th of January at noon. Uh, whether it's um, at live on the steps of the Capitol or in, virtually in some other way, I'm not so sure right now. I, I think there has to be a great deal of concern over actually doing a live event. Uh, even with the maximum security possible. But uh, we will have a new president and vice president. We will have a president who is much more um, uh, genteel, who is much more, uh, uh, much more of a bridge builder, someone who will not base his um, administration on alienation and fear and you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that that will make a, make a big difference. I'm, you know, I know Joe Biden, he's an, an amazingly good, good person. And the people he has brought around him are talented and also high character, high character. So uh, I'm hopeful that this administration will provide the kind of leadership which will change the tone. Well, Congressman, thank you so much. And, and I feel terrible to have to say stay safe in Washington, D.C. Thank you very much, Rachel. I appreciate it. Take care. Mm -hmm. You too.